All right, so here we are. We're bolting down the um, uh, work holder that's going to hold the boards um, as it loads inside the uh, paste machine. Um, it's going to go inside this machine, and there's like a squeegee that's going to come over, and it's going to push solder paste through this uh, little openings in the stencil over here, and it'll uh, put solder paste on all the little pads. And there's a hundred of them on here. These are the little um, the neopixels are all going to go on here, and then uh, these are all going to become Ringo's eyes. All right, so we're just doing. We got the purple coming out right here. Do a quick inspection on the solder paste. This is the first one of these we're running. Just make sure that it's uh, lined up like it's supposed to. We got the dog down here that goes crazy over the light. Come on, you can go flatter than that. So she's got to whip the light a little bit. We got the pasted up board going over here. In the assembly machine. Alright, get there. It's gonna look at the alignment marks. Found them. And here we go. We've got a thousand neopixels on this reel, and we'll go through the entire thing here probably in the next uh, 30 minutes to an hour, I'm guessing. Okay, so I'm performing the test right now on all of the, the eyeball uh, neopixels. And we've got this little test fixture. It's driven by an Arduino. And I'm going down the line, and we're testing every single one of them. And we're also seeing this other um, pixel changing colors over here as the, the message is passed from this one back to the, the next pi pixel on the line. That kind of proves that the, that the pixel is working correctly. And we're doing this to all of them. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta make a good connection. There we go. So the white tells me that all the red, green, and blue are all turning on, and it goes between uh, bright and dim, so that tells me it's controlling each uh, of the LEDs inside there correctly. So now we're going back and doing a 100% test on every single uh, pixel just to make sure they're all working correctly. Um, we wanna make sure that our process, um, that our, our solder work is good, um, that we haven't damaged any uh, pixels in our, in our process of soldering them and uh, depanalyzing the boards into individuals like this. So we're going to test every single one of them just to make sure we identify any potential problems early. But we've had 100% pass so far. We haven't had a single bad one. So, and we've done about three or 400 of them now. So it uh, looks like our process is all dialed in. So here we are programming up the uh, placement machine. Uh, he's doing the Ringo bottoms right now. Uh, this machine's about 25 years old. It's uh, late 80s, early 90s technology, um, but it's, it's been a workhorse. And uh, there, there is some software we can use to make this process a little easier, but we find that if we're not doing lots of different boards, um, it's actually easier just to do it kind of manually. So what he's doing is going down the list of all the locations. He types in uh, what part number it is on the controller there. And then he goes up on the display up here and there's some crosshairs and you target the part on the board with the crosshairs and lock it in and the machine remembers um, where that part is. The board's actually over inside the machine right here and it's got a little um, camera that's shining down on it and that's what he's seeing up here on the display. And then once all the coordinates are in, we come over here to our old school DOS 6.22 computer that runs the whole thing. and. Uh, And we end up with all these lists, old DOS style right here, and then uh, we can look at all the locations, all the like all the placement locations he's putting in right now. These are all the coordinates to where all the parts or all the parts are on the board, and then eventually we'll put that into a, a sequence file that'll tell it to go pick up a certain part at um, whichever one of these feeders needs to have the part. So you know if the part's coming off of this feeder, we'll tell it we'll give it a feeder number, and we'll tell it in the program to pick up from here, and then go to whatever placement location it is, and that just goes back and forth like that until all the parts are on there. So this is the problem we're having. It's not picking up the part. There's not enough. It's breaking the vacuum. You can see there's no part on there. And all it did was toss it right there. 
Okay, so the problem we've been running into for the last couple of days, it's been the bane of our existence for most of the day yesterday, is trying to pick up the programming point, the programming ports. Um, this is a little bit heavier than any part we've used before. It's a tiny bit heavier than a USB port, and our machine just won't pick it up. The nozzle is coming down and it grabs it, and then it jerks away so quickly that we think it's a breaking vacuum. And uh, luckily we've got a, a guy we know that is kind of the, the Yoda of these machines and he knows how they work inside and out and he told us a way to control the height there so we're going to try that now and if this works, if we pick it up, then we're off to the races. Alright, I'm going to hit the air. Uh, pick up. It's 56, right? Yep. Yeah. Alright, here we go. Oh, Damn, got it. It got it. High five. Can you see the little part on there? Is this little guy, I'm going to reach in the side and grab it. Oh, I knocked it off. Let's see if it'll do it one more time. Step, pick up. That's not the worst problem. As long as it's grabbing, we're good. Hey, you got it twice in a row. All right, so that's great news. Problem solved. On to the next step now. <laughs> 